Welcome to our practice. It's been a challenging year, shall we say, for all of us. And coming to the mat, creating that space, carving out that time, really important to keep us sane in body and mind. <laughs> so I'm happy to be here today, feeling really grateful. And I hope you'll enjoy this journey. Let's start in Vajrasa. Rolling the shoulders back and closing the eyelids. Finding here our breath. Long, soft, smooth inhalations and exhalations. And following the breath inside. What does it touch? How does it touch? Where is it touching? Relaxing the shoulders, relaxing the jaw. Watching how the breath changes within a few cycles of being here. And then lifting the hands up, pressing the palms together. And placing inside our hands something infinitely precious. that makes us feel wonderment. And from this space, opening together with one arm. Inhale. Dropping the chin towards the heart. Releasing the hands. Lifting the head back up. And opening the eyes. Coming to Yoga Mudrasan in Vajrasan. But the hands are going to hold the outside edges of the mat. So that when we're in our Yoga Mudrasan Vajrasan, we can push forward and move the buttocks back and really find traction to increase our sensitivity here. The eyes of the elbows turning forward, the shoulders broad, dropping the head down. Soft, smooth inhales, soft, smooth exhales. Feeling the arms spiral open, feeling the shoulders broaden. Feeling the sides of the neck relax and lengthen. And now pushing the arms into the hands, which are holding the mat, of course, and simultaneously cutting the outer thighs down to the ground and pushing the buttocks back. Keep the shoulders broad. And again, pushing the arms to the hands and pushing back from that, the shoulder blades moving down the back. And one more time, pushing the arms into the hands and pushing yourselves back away from that action. And then coming back up. And let's do the same thing in Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Dog. So the hands holding the mat in the same way. Finding Adho Mukha Svanasana with our heels lifted and our knees bent. Check that your heels are really lifted as high as possible. Feeling the arms, the inner elbows facing forward, the shoulders broad. Now push the arms to the hands 
and push back away from that. And again, push the arms into the hands, pushing the hips back away from that. And one more time, push the arms into the hands and move the armpits to the hips and begin to straighten the legs. Keep pushing the arms to the hands, moving the armpits to the hips, the hips moving back. The heels are still lifted as high as possible. And then walking forward, feet the width of the mat, turning the toes in, the heels out, taking hold of the elbows and dropping the head down, hanging Uttanasana. Press into the feet firmly and find your heels. Divide the heels into two. So you would have the inner heel and the back heel. The front heel and the back heel. Now press into the inner heels more than the back heels. And in order to really press down into the inner heels, we often have to bring our hips slightly forward so that they're really right on top of the heels and so that the legs become even more perpendicular to the mat. Pressing down into those inner heels, grip the knees up, grip the thigh muscles up, the entire length of the femur bone until you feel the head of the femur bone waking up. Keep rolling the inner groins back, keeping the weight pressing on the inner heel as you pull the elbow tips down towards the ground. And then release and place the hands on the mat and bring the feet together. Uttanasan. Bending the knees, moving the thighs back as if there's a chair there and widening the knees apart so that you can come in between the legs. And now stepping the left leg back so that it's in line with the left heel. But the right foot stays where it is, centralized. Pushing ourselves forward and backwards, trying to keep the right heel connected to the mat. And then resting that back knee on the ground, rolling that back thigh in so that we feel our hips turning to the right and being on the top of the foot. Now one hand on each side, move the back knee back more, press the buttocks down, this arm is containing the leg, deepening the groin, really connecting the femur bones into the hips and press down into the fingertips to lengthen the front spine and lift the mirror of the stone plate up to the sky. Front shoulders rolling back, shoulder blades moving down the back. And then gently coming out, bringing the feet together, squatting, the knees slightly spread, press into the inner heels. And now step the right leg back so that it's in line with the right hip. Bring the hand onto the inside, open that left knee a little bit and begin to push yourselves forward and backwards, propelling yourselves from the back foot. Keeping the left heel firmly on the ground. And now bend the right leg, place the knee on the mat, roll that back thigh in. Bring the hand to the outside edge so that the left arm is containing the bent left knee and be on the top of the back foot. Press the fingertips down, lift up. Press the middle buttocks forward. And with your inhale, Imagine that you were lifting the pubic bone up to the belly button, the belly button up through the solar plexus, the solar plexus up through the sternum plate, the front shoulders rolling back, getting more and more lift and length in the inner walls of the sternum plate. 
so that it's rising up to the sky. And then releasing, bringing that back foot in, into a squat, the knees slightly separated, and now pushing into the heels in order to straighten the legs. And as we straighten, the femur bones coming into the hip sockets and exhaling forward, Uttanasana. Drop the head right down, let the back of the neck be long. Let the skull decontract around the brain, let the brain start to have a sense of quietness, of coolness. The femur bones still coming into the hip sockets, the heels dense, shoulders broad. And then looking up, hands on the hips, and slowly making our way back out. Turning to face the long edge of the mat, standing in Tadasan. We're coming for Uttita Trikonasan with extra attention to the traction. So preparing, stepping or jumping, pushing into the outside edges of the feet, grip the roots of the thighs, lift the fingertips up, lift the chest up, turning to the right. Inhale, exhale, reaching, really lengthening that bottom waist, Keep the back arm moving away. So you're really stretching here, coming down, placing the hand between the thumb and the index finger, the webbing of the hand where it lands, and stretch that top arm to the sky. Now bend this back arm and place it on the hip. Roll the front of that shoulder back and push into the webbing of the bottom hand to turn and twist. With each exhale, here we go. And again. One more time. Now hold that and relift the arm. And then inhaling up and coming through the middle to the left hand side. Pushing into the outside edge of that back foot, gripping the roots of the thighs, stretch the arms, lift the fingertips up a little bit, lift the chest, inhale. Exhale, reaching, lengthening that bottom waist. Keep moving the back arm back as you reach forward. Coming down, placing the webbing of the hand between the thumb and the index finger and the top hand to the sky. Now working on the twisting action. So bend this back arm, elbow back, and begin to push from this bottom hand to twist and turn with the exhale. Here we go. One more time. Holding it there, grip the roots of the thighs and stretch the top arm to the sky. And inhaling back up, turning the feet in and jumping the feet together. Okay, taking a strap and making with our strap a little loop about like this. So I'm going to turn this way so you can see from the side. The left hand holds the strap like this. Garudasan. The right arm comes underneath, winds, and puts the hand into the strap. So we're not trying to bring the hands together. We want to resist with the hands, pressing the hands into the strap. Move the shoulders down, the shoulder blades down. Keep pressing, finding that resistance. And releasing, changing sides. The right hand holds the strap. The left arm comes underneath. The hand finds the strap. In Garudasan resistance. 
So one hand is higher than the other. You're not trying to get that hand up to be equal to the other. Shoulders broad, shoulder blades going down the back. Ignite the arms, ignite the hands. And releasing. Feel the energy coming there. Okay, changing sides again. Left hand holds the strap. Right arm goes underneath. Finds the strap. Pressing the hands away from each other. Shoulders broad, shoulder blades down the back. And exhale, releasing. Last time, last side. Right hand holds the strap. Left arm comes underneath. And here we are. Create that resistance. Shoulders down, shoulder blades down, chest lifting. And exhale, and releasing. Just putting the strap to the side. Taking a block now. Holding with your hands the block firmly. The fingers can lift like this. Now bending the arms, keeping that pressure, holding the block, creating that resistance, finding that force, the elbows in line with the shoulder. Press the block, press the block. Shoulder blades going down the back. And now re-extend the arms. Keep that density, press. And bend again. Don't let the elbows widen. Lift them up so they're in line with the shoulder. Keep pressing as we re-extend the arms. And then exhale. And releasing. Take a moment to just feel the circulation coming through. The awareness. Okay, full Garudasan. I'm looking down at this mic because it's a pose that sort of squishes the mic. Okay, here we go. Lifting the arms up. Bringing the right arm underneath the left elbow. Winding around. Now lift the elbows up and move the hands away and move the shoulder blades down the back. Relax the face. And exhale. Changing sides. Arms lifting. Left arm comes underneath. Twisting, winding, finding the hands. Elbows up, hands away, shoulder blades down the back. And exhale, and releasing. Taking the strap again. So we want a loop that's going to go above our elbows so that our arms are parallel. So checking, seeing. Mine could get a little bit bigger. Arms through. And now lift the hands. Lift the fingers. Press, create density. Lift up. And now we're going to turn the hands open away from each other. Keep pulling the fingertips back. And then bringing the hands down. Fingertips back. Press forward into the heel of the hand. Fingertips back. And back up to the side. And back up. One more time. Ready? Out to the side. And down. Fingertips back and to the side, and back up, and exhale, and taking the strap off. Amazing how these little movements can really just make that area 
come alive. Okay, moving our mat to a wall. We're going to use the wall for our feet to climb the feet up so that our weight is in our arms. And we're going to do forward to the side and back. If you don't have a wall right now, you could also put your feet on a chair just to lift the feet and bring the weight into the hands. Okay, here we are, spreading the palms and fingers, spaciousness, eyes at the elbows facing forward and lifting up and finding the wall, pressing, turning the eyes of the elbows forward, shoulders broad, lift the belly button to help the core, lift the fingertips up, lift the thumb up, and two, and one. Coming back down, and just giving that a little shake. Okay, we're now gonna turn the hands open, away from each other, and do the same thing. So here we are. Now the eyes of the elbows can really face forward. Shoulders broad, moving back, and lifting one leg at a time. Keep the core firm. Turn the eyes of the elbows forward. Press down into the heels of the hands. Arms pressing into the hands and lifting up from that. And then gently coming down. And just giving that a little shake. The head turning from the right to the left, shoulders down a few times. Okay, and the third one, hands turning like this. Now, if you're having a really hard time getting your hands to the mat, you could take a blanket and just create a little ledge for that liftingness. So turning the fingers, and this is, is an option, okay? So I'll do it once like this too. Ready, moving the feet back. Finding the walls, it's a very different feeling. And lifting. Press down to lift up. Gravity and anti-gravitational force. And two, and one. Coming down and just shaking that out. Okay, let's do those all one more time. So I'm gonna move the blanket and here we go again, facing forward. Turning the eyes of the elbows forward, pressing the arms down, shoulders opening. Moving back. One leg at a time, lifting. Reconnect with everything we've just put in place. Eyes of the elbows forward, pressing down to lift up. Shoulders broad. And exhale, releasing. Turning the hands open now. Spiral the arms with the movement that turns the eyes of the elbows forward and keeps the shoulders broad. Press down and ignite. And then moving the feet back, one leg at a time. Keep spiraling the upper arms away from each other. Pressing down to lift up. Pressing down to lift up. One more time. And exhale. And releasing. Third and final one. Turning the fingers towards us. Mayurasana style. And pressing down to lift up. Igniting that strength, that density, that compactness. Moving the feet back. Climbing one foot up the wall at a time. Mm -hmm. 
Keep spiraling the arms. Shoulder blades going down the back, core firm. And then exhale, releasing. And Vajrasana. Now coming up to standing, and we're gonna come right into the wall with the right shoulder. Feet in Tadasan. And lift this arm up so that the hand is in line with the shoulder. No higher, no lower. Placing the heel of the hand flat, the palm of the hand flat on the floor, the fingers extending slightly up. And step right in. So you really have to roll the front of this shoulder back. The hips are facing forward. The other hand makes a little fist and is coming behind us and it's finding the tailbone. So right between the crack of the buttocks. And then the front of that shoulder is rolling back too. And we're turning away from the wall. As we stretch that back arm back and press the heel of the hand into the wall family. So reigniting always that density, that aliveness. And changing sides. Tadasan, left arm up, finding the wall, stepping in and moving that arm back. Really allow the front of this left shoulder to roll, to open. Allow the tricep to also roll to help with that opening. Press the heel of the hand, lift the fingertips up. And then bring the right arm behind, making a little fist. Finding the tailbone. Pressing forward as we roll both shoulders back and turn the head. Try to lift the side ribs to lengthen the waist with each inhale. To turn and twist with each exhale. Keep the heel of the hand firm. And then exhale. And changing sides again. Right arm is coming to the wall. Tadasan. Bring the arm back. Check that it's in line. Roll the arm to follow that opening. Left hand behind. Finding the tailbone, the very base of the spine, pressing it forward as we roll the shoulders back and turn and twist. Keep the heel of that right hand vibrant, the fingers lifting up, and see how the arm becomes more compact and alive when we do that. Shoulder blades going down the back. Sideways lengthening and lifting. And last time, last side. Turning to the left. Finding the position on the wall, stepping in, keeping that back hand vibrant. Feeling the roll of the shoulder going with that. And then bringing the fist of the right hand behind us. Finding the tailbone pressing forward as we roll both shoulders back and turn to the right. Keep that back arm vibrant, pressing. Shoulder blades going down the back. Sternum plate lifting. And exhale. And releasing. Okay, coming to our mat for Prasarita Padotanasana. So I'm just going to pull this away from the wall a little bit. There we are. From Tarasan. Jumping. Nice and wide. Turn the toes in, the heels out. Lift the inner arches, the inner ankles. Extend the arms, fingertips lifted. Lift the cellular chest. Hands on the hips. With your hands on the hips, feel. Is this area of your body working? Grip the roots of the thighs. See if you feel a difference. And try to grip more and more so everything feels compact, alive, ignited. Front shoulders back, chest lifting. Exhaling forward. Grip the roots of the thighs. Lift the inner groins to the outer groins. And place the fingertips on the floor. Adjust the feet as needed. Really staying connected to the outside edges of the feet, pressing them down, a firm edge there. Now we're gonna go down into the classical pose. We bring the crown of the head to the floor 
and the hands come back so that they're in line with the heels. Fingers facing forward and the elbow bent, which you all know. We're going to be there and then we're going to turn our hands and do the same thing with our hands turned this way. And then we're going to stretch the arms and be on the tops of the hands, the palms facing up to the sky. Okay, so re-grip the roots of the thighs and exhaling into the full pose. Keep pushing into the outside edges of those feet. Keep lifting the inner knee to the inner groin. The femur bones coming up into the hip sockets. Make sure the elbows aren't widening. Press down into the heels of the hands and ignite the memory. Lift the shoulder up as you press down. Feel the upper back engage. Relax the face completely. And now we're going to turn our hands so that our fingertips are facing back and we're seeing the inner wrists facing us. I'm moving my head so you can see, just to be sure. And bending the forearms perpendicular to the floor. Draw the outer elbows in towards each other. Now press down into the heels of the hands and lift the shoulders up. Roots of the thighs firm. Keep pressing into the heels of the hands, seeing if you can lift the fingertips up. Really press, don't let the elbows widen. Lift the shoulders up, face relaxed. And now we're gonna move the hands back, so I'm just moving my head. They're gonna slide back like this, so the palms are facing the sky. Relift the inner arches, the inner ankles. Push into the outside edge of the feet. Grip the roots of the thighs. Now press into the tops of the hands and relift the shoulders. Engage. Front throat soft. Repress. Lift the shoulders up. Feel the arms become strong. One more time, press down, lift the trapezius muscles up, the shoulders up, grip the roots of the thighs. And then exhale, releasing, bring the fingertips forward. Rip the roots of the thighs, hands to the hips, coming up, pressing down to come up. Extend the arms, lift the fingertips, lift the chest, and jump the feet together. Tadasan. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation. And let's bring all of those arm movements now into Shirshasana. So finding a wall, taking a blanket, and let's meet back here. Setting up your blanket. And now let's come and bring the crown of the head to the floor. And we're going to go straight to Shirshasana 2. So fingers facing forward, pressing into the heel of the hand in order to ignite and create that firmness and that awareness of that firmness, how to ignite it. Okay, let's go. So fingertips are facing forward, bringing the crown of the head to the floor. Don't let the elbows widen. Scoop the outer elbows in towards each other. Turn the toes under, straighten the legs, feel the weight come, and make the weight go to the heels of the hands. Press down and lift the trapezius muscles and the shoulders up. Feel the ignition of the arms and the upper back. Walking the feet in. Bending the knees and coming up with bent legs and then straightening the legs.
Keep pressing into the heels of the hands, lifting the shoulders up. Don't let the elbows widen. And now bend the knees. And come back down. Okay, second one. We're going to turn the hands so the fingers are going back away from the wall. So placing the hands. Placing the head. Now, if this one's not available to you, just turn the fingers out to the side. Coming in. Connecting whichever direction your fingers are in. Connecting with the heel of the hand. Pressing down to ignite the shoulders. And bending the knees and coming up. Press down to lift up. Press down to lift those shoulders up. Watch the elbows carefully. Keep pressing down. And now bending the knees. Keep pressing down, lifting the shoulders up. And coming down. And out. Feeling that. Okay, now we're going to take it to these hands. Palm facing up. Arms along. And if it's too much, you just do the last variation. Coming in. Straightening the legs. Press down into the hands and lift the shoulders up. Feel the muscles of the arms wrap around the bones. Feel a new firmness. And then walking the feet towards your hands. Bending the knees. The backs of the hands are still pressing down to lift the shoulders up as we straighten the legs. Keep pressing the hands down and lifting the shoulders up. The lats gripping in. The trapezius muscles moving down the back, the shoulders lifting. Preparing to come down. Bending the knees. Keep the shoulders lifted. And coming down. And Vajrasa. Moving the head to the right. Chin up. The head to the left. So don't lower the chin. Keep the chin lifted. And to the right. And to the left. One more time. And to the right. And to the left. Okay, back to Shishasan. We're going to go up to Shishasan and we're going to try in Shishasan, starting off fingers facing forward, staying in Shishasan, seeing if we can turn the hands, staying in Shishasan, seeing if we can stretch the arms. If it's too much, come down between arm variations. Okay, here we go. Ignite the arms, press into the heels of the hands, outer elbows coming in towards each other. Lift the shoulders. Bending the knees, lifting up. Keep the shoulders lifted. Watch how those elbows love to come away from each other. Okay, we're getting ready to turn the hands so that the fingers are moving away from us. One hand at a time. Press the heels of the hands down. Outer elbows towards each other, shoulders broad and lifting.
And now our next position, one hand at a time, stretching the arms onto the backs of the hands. Press down into the backs of the hands, lift the shoulders up. Wrap the muscles of the arms around the arm bands. Feel the lats coming in towards each other, containing and helping the foundation of the pose. Shoulder blades moving down the back. Back ribs pressing in. Okay, we're going to come back to the position where the fingers are facing away from us, our second variation, so to speak. So bringing the hands back in, press down into the heels of the hands. With each exhale, press. Light that fire of firmness. And now the hands coming to our first position, facing forward. Press down into the heels of the hands. See if you can lift the fingertips slightly up. Outer elbows coming in towards each other. Observe the new sensations, the strength in the upper back. Lift those shoulders up again. Draw the lats in. Charge the legs. And now bending the knees, keep pressing, lifting the shoulders up. Hands coming down and releasing. Yoga Mudrasan. re-emerging. All right, just putting this blanket to the side for now. Well, actually, you might need it for the next pose, depending on your hips. We're going to take a block, and we're going to be in Barakonasan with our backs against the wall, and the block between the spine, thoracic spine, and the wall. So if your Barakonasan is tricky, take a blanket, fold it up, so that you can sit kind of right on the edge of it, or take a bolster, whatever is the right height for you, coming in. Barakonasan. So if the knees are lifted, I really encourage you to take some height. And then the block. Sliding down. It's not in the lower back. It's not in the neck, the cervical spine. The top of the block is against the shoulder blades and the rest of the block is going down from there. Now press down. Roll the shoulders back, the front shoulders. Roll the outer arms back towards the wall. And press down to lift the chest up and ignite the upper back. See if you can feel the very subtle sensation of the front chest, the skin chest, stretching open. Let the block help you to reignite over and over again awareness in the thoracic spine, the dorsal spine. Okay, and now we're going to do the same pose, bringing the legs to Upavishta Konasan. The sit bones widening apart. So if the block slipped, bring it up a little bit. Hands pressing down to ignite, to roll the front shoulders back, to move the outer arms to the wall, and then to press 
the back ribs forward, the shoulder blades are pressing forward and moving down the back. Let each inhale be the revealing openness and hold that as you exhale. Don't let it close down. Often in the exhale, we let ourselves get smaller. We close the accordion of the ribs. Go against that tendency. And then exhale. And moving that. Okay, we're going to move away from the wall. Just do a little bit of core work here, keeping the sternum open and the upper back engaged. Paripurna Navasans and Abhada Paripurna Navasans. So in Barakonasan, hands behind, fingertips facing forward. Elbows coming in towards each other, outer arms moving back. Now press down in order to ignite. So we're leaning back a little bit, but the chest is really open. Now bring the memory of the block on the upper back and ignite again. And again. And again. Excellent. Now we're going to bring the knees up towards each other. Keeping the opening of the chest, the ignition of the arms, the shoulders, the upper back. You can move the hands back a little bit. Reignite. Feet off the floor. Keep that ignition in the front chest. Lift the knees higher. And now extend the right leg. Ardha Paripurna Navasan. Outer arms going back. Reimagining the brick in the back, pressing us forward in the chest, the cellular chest lifting, moving forward, bending the knees and lifting the left leg. So straightening it from there, not lowering the knees, keeping the knees nice and high. And back down one more time on each side. Now see, before we lift the leg, see how we started to move onto the back here. Try to be more on the sit bones and lift the chest, squeeze the inner knees. Here we go. Stretching that right leg. Femur bones coming into the hip sockets. And bending. Lift the knees again. And stretch the left leg straight. Try to be on the sit bones more than the sacrum. Lift up. Chest open. Ignition of the upper back. And then bending the knees, knees lifted, feet down, Barakonasan. Bring the hands back in and recreate this Dandasan action. Outer elbows coming in, outer arms moving back. Press down to ignite. And then last time, bringing the knees back up. Lift the feet off the ground, lift the knees high. Extend the right leg from there. So see how the foot is really high now. Try to be on the sit bones to press the back ribs in. Press up. And then bending, re-lift the knees. Femur bones coming into the hip sockets and extend the left leg. Don't let the chest collapse. Don't let the upper back stop its work. And back down. Relift the knees. Last time on the right side. Lift up. Try to be on the sit bones. And back down. Lift the knees. And last time on this side, lift up. Be on the sit bones, elbows back. Femur bones coming into the hip sockets. And bend the knees, lift them. And Parakonasan, moving the hands back in. Roll the front shoulders back, move the outer arms back. Ignite. 
Shoulder blades moving down the back, cellular chest lifting. And then bring the knees back up and straighten the legs, being in Dadnasan. Heels firm, front thighs pressing down. Roll the front shoulders back, outer arms back. Back ribs pressing forward. Shoulder blades down the back. Cellular chest lifting. Okay, last Padi Purnanabhasan, we're going to go into the full pose, starting with bent knees. So bring the feet towards you, lift the heels, knees up high. And now move the hands back, elbows back, shoulders back. Ignite presence there. Lift the knees up higher. And now bring the hands off and wrap your arms behind the thighs. Come back onto the sit bones. Lift the knees up higher. Don't let them drop. Move the shoulders down the back. Shoulder blades down the back. And now we're going to stretch the right arm and grip the legs with the right arm. Stretch the left arm and grip the outer knees with the left arm. Remember when we had the block between our hands? Create that same density. Press, grip, shoulders down. And now straighten both legs up nice and high. Keep gripping the outer thighs with the arms. Try to be as much as possible on the sit bones. Shoulder blades going down the back. Grip with the arms. And five. And four. And three. Shoulder blades going down the back. And two. Femur bones into the hip sockets. And one. Bending. Relift the knees. Grip with the arms. Arms underneath, holding the backs of the thighs. Lift the knees up higher. Be on the sit bones again. Noticing how we came off them. And then releasing, hands back, ignite, elbows back. And then extend the legs. And be in Dandasan. Soft, smooth inhalations, soft, smooth exhalations, without getting passive, just coming back to evenness. Okay, it's now time for Sarvangasan. We're coming back to the wall and we're going to need three or four blankets dependent on your neck. So let's meet back here. Here's our setup. I have one blanket underneath. The back of our head is going to be on this blanket. The crown of the head close to the wall. Then I have three blankets here. You could use two making sure that there's enough space between the edges of these blankets and the wall for the back of your head to fit there. And then taking the mat and putting it here so we have some extra stickiness for our elbows because we're not going to be using straps today because we're going to be using our arms against the wall. So we're going to come up, lying on backwards our head here, and bend the knees and do a kind of karnapidasan bringing the hands behind the back, interlocking the fingers, we're opening the shoulders. Then we'll straighten the legs, the tips of the toes against the wall, finding Sarvangasan. Do that a few times. And then we'll release the hands from behind the back and we'll bring the hands to the wall. We'll do this first, right? And then we'll turn the hands and then we'll lift the hands. So the three arm movements that we've been working with all day. So getting all set up and let's come in. Lying down, testing that we really do have enough space. And then lifting up, holding the back, the hips, keeping the knees bent, splitting the knees apart, 
so that they can come towards the ears. Rolling the shoulders back, getting the hands higher up the back, and then interlocking the fingers and stretching the arms straight. Now move your weight onto the right shoulder to lift the left shoulder up and roll it back more. And then change sides so you can roll the right shoulder back more. And then bending the elbows and placing the hands on the back. Finding your breath here, evening the breath out. Keep pressing the upper arms down. Keep pressing the elbows down. Keep moving the shoulders away from the ears. Chin coming towards the throat. The heels of the hands Pressing in and up to ignite the outer arms going down into the mat, the front elbows moving back, I mean the front shoulders moving back, and the elbows pressing into the mat. Okay, now we're going to straighten the legs one at a time. The toes pressing against the wall. Charging the legs, rising up. How can we press down to ignite that lift here? See if the toes can go higher. And we're going to bend the knees again to our Karna Pidasan. Stretch the arms behind the back, interlock the fingers, and re-roll each of your shoulders back, getting the shoulder blades to go both forward to the chest and up the back. Stretch those arms back, press the elbow tips down, and now bend the elbows and bring the hands Back to the back. Breathing smooth, even breath cycles. See if the knees can come a little lower. Keep pressing the upper arms, the elbows down. Pressing the heels of the hands in and up. Now we're going to straighten the legs again, one leg at a time, the toes finding the wall, press down to lift up, keep igniting that cellular intelligence in the arms, in the elbows, in the back, in the shoulders. Recharge the legs, re-soften the throat. Now let's move our hands and come into our 
various hand positions. So bringing the hands off the back, bringing the arms to the sides of the face, turning the palms so the fingers are facing down, and the hands, the heels of the hands, are pressing into the wall. Press them, activate. Move the shoulders away from the ears. Check that your elbows aren't widening. Keep the arms in that state of compact ignition. Okay, now let's turn the hand so the fingertips are facing up the wall. And we're trying to press into the heels of the hands and trying to keep the forearms parallel to the floor. Push the toes against the wall. Go higher. Ignite everywhere. But soft face. The eyeballs receding to the back of the skull. The corners of the lips soft flowing to the ears. And now we're going to extend the arms. So the backs of the hands are on the wall, the fingers going up, the arms are straight. Press the backs of the hands to the wall. Ignite the arms, broaden the shoulders, charge the legs, supported Niralamba Sarvangasa. And then removing the hands from the wall, bring the hands behind the back again, holding the back, bending the knees back down to Karna Pidasan. Now with the hands reaching up and holding the outer edges of each foot, the right hand holding the right outer foot, the left hand holding the left outer foot, and gently bring those feet down the wall so the knees are coming lower towards the ground. The finger bone is still coming into the hip sockets. Smooth and even breath cycles. Don't let the elbows widen, keep scooping them in. Don't let the face get hard, keep it soft flowing, melting. And now, releasing the hands, preparing to come down. Nice and gently. Bending the knees, feet to the floor.
And when you feel ready, rolling over and coming back up. All right, we've got one last beautiful pose before Shabasan. I have to move this little microphone off and Samakasan because it always switches off and I don't find out until afterwards. So now I just move it. And for this next pose, it's a Sukta Vanakonasan in Sutta Bandha Samagasan. So we need two bolsters or one bolster and blankets rolled up as bolsters, two blocks and a strap. Meeting back on the mat. Hello again. So here's the setup. This blanket is the comfort for the back of the head, for the edges of the shoulders when we come down. This bolster we're lying on, the spine replicating the direction of the bolster. These two blocks are here so that the second bolster can be put on them. Because if we didn't have the blocks, we'd have to move the second bolster or all the blankets rolled up as bolsters a little bit further back so that they were fully supported. But this way, we can move this bolster a little bit forward and we're thus getting more length from the bolster. Now we come to sit and we make sure that our strap has a nice wide loop. If you haven't done this before, this is the most incredible pose, which you'll want, definitely want to add into your repertoire of restoration. And now legs in Barakonasan. Strap, coming over the knees and tightening up. But if you tighten too much, the knees are going to come together. So not tightening that much. You still want to be in Barakonasan, feeling the strap. And now we're coming backwards. Lifting the feet up and placing the outer feet on the bolster. And as we lie down, you want to go nice and slowly to make sure that you don't overslide out. We just want the edges of the shoulders to come to the blanket. And then hands like this, arms like this, 90 degree angle, where the forearm is perpendicular to the upper arms and where the elbows are in line with the shoulders. Making sure that your buttocks are still moving towards your heels so that the belly button can move towards the lower back and so that the organs in the abdominal cavity can recede. And then we get this beautiful broadness in the side ribs the cellular chest broadening and lifting to the sky. And when everything feels just right, closing the eyelids, Ujjayi one breath.
and then the eyelids gently fluttering open. And then bringing the knees in towards each other. Moving backwards, taking that strap off, and then rolling over to the side. And back up. And now, finally, Shavasana. So we can move everything away. We can keep one bolster for underneath our knees and we can take one blanket for our neck and head. I'm actually going to have a little bit of a lower fold. There we go. And coming back in, surrendering to our final restingness becoming one in that letting go-ness, relinquishing our sense of I, me, just melting into the everything. So first being sure that your buttocks are moving towards the bolster and that the lower back is connected to the floor. The arms extended 45 degrees away from the trunk. And of course, our shoulders rolling back. The saliva chest, broad, open, lifting, flowering. And when everything feels just right, with an exhale, closing the eyelids and melting into Shavasana.
loka samastaha sukino bhavantu. Om shanti shanti shanti. May the universe know love. May the universe know peace. And may we help all those that we come into contact with to feel the same. Om. Peace. 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 And then rolling over to the right hand side. Welcome back. Our practice is complete. I hope you feel fantastic. I hope you enjoyed this work. I hope that you forgot what needed to be forgotten for a while and immersed in heart, body, breath, connection. Namaste. See you again soon. Take care.